Hey, g'day guys. So first up we have the helmet slot. Our absolute best in slot is the Humbert Helm. This is a 4% drop chance of the Dungawak Rifleman and Hillsbrad Foot Helms. They are level 29 to 30 elite mobs, so you probably can't solve them at level 25. You'll need to get a group for this one. The other issue with these guys is that they're members of the Alliance and therefore they can only be attacked by the Horde. If you're Alliance, you will need to try and get this off the neutral auction house. To tidy you over until you can get one, there's a few decent options. First up, if you're NG, you can craft a green tinted goggles. The mats are cheap and it's learnt from a trainer, so you should have no problems getting this one. If you're not NG, you can nab a ringed helm of Garneg Charskull. It's a 30% drop chance and Garneg is a level 29 non-elite, so this should be easy to solo at level 25. He does live in wetlands though, so it's going to be easier to farm for Alliance than it is for the Horde. Finally this one, it's a bit of a wild card. You can get Lucky Fishing Hat at level 25. This is from a rare fish that can only be fished during the Sunday Fishing Contest. In my opinion, this is just going to be way too annoying to get. You might as well just get a Humberts rather than try and target this one. For completeness, I'll also list Azure Silk Hood. This is crafted by tailors, it should be dirt cheap, but it's also hot garbage. Only use this if you would otherwise wear nothing. Now the next slot. This is going to be one of the toughest slots to fill. Our absolute best is the Spectral Necklace of the Bear with 4 strength and 4 stamina. It's a BOE world drop that mostly drops from mobs around level 30, so there's a very good chance you'll just straight up never see one on the auction house. And even if you do, it's likely to be very, very expensive. The new BFD raid also has a threat neck that's very comparable. No stamina is rough, but that's a lot of strength and energy. Our next best option, Sentinel's Medallion for the Alliance, or Scout's Medallion for the Horde, requires Honoured with a Warsong Gulch reputation. Now hopefully, the new Ashen Vale PvP content gives the rep, otherwise there's going to be a lot of Warsong Gulch to get this. And there's only one other amulet that does anything at all. Glowing Green Talisman is a world drop just like Spectral Necklace, except this one sucks. Okay, shoulder slot. Our best in slot is Mantle of Thieves, a rare drop from Razorfin Cruel Trash. It's about a 1 in 1000 chance to drop from each trash mob in a dungeon that's probably too tough for even a well geared group. So once you've given up on that dream, there are other options that are actually pretty okay. Robust Shoulders is a BOE world drop and we're looking for one off the monkey. The ideal would be off the bear with strength and stam, but that doesn't appear to roll on these shoulders. Alternatively, earthen leather shoulders are a good stam option crafted by leather workers. As an extra bonus, there's also some acceptable options from quest rewards. Alliance players can get luminescent amis from the Fallen Sky Lake quest in Ashen Vale. For the Horde, Voodoo Mantle comes from the Jin Zill's Forest Magic quest in Stone Talon Mountains. Both quests are easily soloable at 25, albeit the Alliance one does require killing one level 30 non-elite mob. If that's a bit too hard, just grab a friend to help. Back slot. Our best in slot is an old favourite from the 19 twink bracket, Sentry Cloak. It's a BOE world drop, so check the auction house regularly and expect to drop a decent stack of gold for it. If you don't want to do that, our next best option is almost a side grade actually. Cape of the Brotherhood has a 23% drop chance off Van Cleef in the Deadmines, which by the way is a dungeon you definitely should be running multiple times anyway. This won't be the only good item from there. Also, there's some solid options from quest rewards. Engineer's Cloak is a reward from the quest Gorenzo Wrench Whistle in Stone Talon Mountains. If you're Alliance, you should go for this, but if you're Horde, you can get access to a better option. Spritekin Cloak is a reward from the Horde only quest Blood of Fury Bloodline, which is also in Stone Talon. It is an elite quest, but you can easily solo it just by locking down the elite with entangling roots. For our chest slot, there are two options that are pretty much exactly as good as each other. Black and Defiest Armour is a 15% drop off Van Cleef and Deadmines, and Clam Weave Tunic drops from the new BFD raid. Other great options are the Tunic of Westfall for the Alliance, a reward from the Defiest Brotherhood quest in Deadmines, 
and for the Horde, Brawn hide armor from the wanted Arnak Chrome Totem quest in Thousand Needles. For an easy to get option, the Alliance can get Bone Studded Leather from the Missing in Action quest in Red Ridge Mountains, and the Horde can get Boar Guard Tunic from the King of the Foul World quest in Ashenvale. For the wrist slot, the new BFD raid has the Bindings of Seracus, which are by far and away our best option. The next best thing though is the Headhunters Bands, a world drop BOE, and it doesn't seem to roll strength slash stam, so we're going to be looking for Agi slash stam. The glowing leather braces, a 1% drop from skeletal waters and duskwood, or bear braces bought from various vendors around the world are also decent. The bear braces at least should be really easy to get, uh, so I'm not going to list any quest rewards, uh, also because all the quest rewards are really bad. Now onto weapons. The absolute best weapon is the slag hammer. This is another of those zone drops from RFK. Failing that, there's another item that's extremely close. The dense triangle mace has only one less strength, and it's a world drop, so there should be more of them floating around. For a cheaper option, you can also look for a magician staff for the bear, or if you can't find or afford either of those, Smite's mighty hammer from Dead Mines is a good threat alternative. For some easy to get quest rewards, Alliance players can get an Orc Crusher from the Thalzoon quest in Redridge, and Horde players can get the Brute Hammer from the Arakara quest in Thousand Needles. For gloves, the absolute bis is the Wolf Claw Gloves, which is yet another of those trash drops from RFK. I'm actually beginning to think that the 25 endgame might just end up being a lot of RFK farming. Failing that, there are also three good world drops. The Brawler Gloves, Emblazoned Gloves, and Pathfinder Gloves are all BOE world drops. Or, for almost as good, leather workers can craft Barbaric Gloves or Toughened Leather Gloves. Of the two, Barbaric are slightly better, but it's very, very close. And for some quest rewards, Alliance can get Hammer Fist Gloves from the Absent Minded Prospector quest in Darkshore, and Horde can get Gloves of the Moon from the Cry of the Thunderhawk quest in the Barrens. Neither of those are very good though. The best belt we can get is a BOE World Drop, the Scaled Leather Belt, preferably off the bear, but if you can't find that, Agi Stam is decent also. Until you get that, you can use quest rewards. For the Alliance, Windborne Belt from the quest High Perch Venom. You pick this up in Dustwallow Marsh, but you complete it in Thousand Needles. Horde can get Deathkin Belt very easily from Geno of the Earthen Ring quest in Ashenvale. As for pants, the absolute bis will depend on whether you have access to Noma Vin. It was implied that Noma might be one of those dungeons that's getting turned into a raid, so it might just be impossible to do this, but if things are like normal, the quest Rig Awards for the Horde, or the Alliance version is the Grand Betrayal, sees you going into Noma again, and it rewards these incredible pants, the Trip Runner Dungarees. Now even if it is in the game, it also might just be flat out too hard, because you do have to kill Mechanir Thermoplug, and he's a level 34 elite dungeon boss. It's going to be pretty hard to do that at level 25. Troll's Bane Leggings is another option for the absolute bis if trip runners aren't possible. Uh, and they are a BOE world drop, so you just have to either be really lucky or really rich. For most players, the pants we're going to be wearing are the Leggings of the Fang. Now these are an elite 18% drop chance of Lord Cobran in the Wailing Caverns. And until you get that, stalking pants are good, and these can be purchased from various vendors around the world. Dervish and Leggings is also there as a world drop. As usual, we're looking for strength stam on it, but Agi stam is also good. If you do want an easy quest reward option, Slick Deviate Leggings are a reward from the Wailing Caverns quest, Deviate Hides. Even if you can't get a group for this one, once you level 25, you can actually just go and solo the trash outside Wailing Caverns, uh, which will drop the hides you need for it. Now onto boots. Here's where we really hope we hoard. The technically best boots are from Scarlet Monastery Trash. These are those Harbinger boots. Uh, but if you're hoard, you can just get these Warsong boots, which are basically a side grade. They come from the quest Warsong Supplies in Ashen Vale, which is easily soloable. However, you do need to pick up a Deadly Blunderbuss as one of the steps for it. So if you're not engineering yourself to craft it, uh, just keep your eyes out on the auction house. There should be heaps of them going for really, really cheap, uh, and probably very quickly after server launch. As for the Alliance, 
you have a bit of a harder job, but there are two reasonable BOEs for you. The Pathfinder boots, unfortunately, don't roll bear, so you can't get strength stamp, but you can get off the monkey, edgy stamp, and there's also emblazoned boots, which are almost as good. They just have a little bit less edgy and a little bit more stam and overall less stats. Now, as for quest rewards, there's really actually only one worth talking about, which are the draftsman boots from the Garenzo Wrench Whistle Quest in Stone Teller Mountains, uh, which is accessible for both factions. Note, though, that this does compete with the Engineer's Cloak, which is one of the cloak quest reward options, uh, and that one's especially useful for the Alliance. Rings. Uh, we will wear, of course, two rings, and there's one of them that both factions are going to be wearing, which is the Silver Lane's Family Seal. Drops from Baron, Silver Lane, and Shadow Fan Keep with a 19% drop chance. For the other ring slot, the Alliance will grab the Seal of Rin from an audience with a king, a long quest chain that starts by looting the head of Van Cleef in the Dead Mines. As for Horde, they have a really simple quest Aragul must die. That just involves Aragul and Shadow Fan Keep and making him die. There are a few alternatives too for this slot. Demon Band is a BOE world drop and it's not unique so you can actually wear two of these if needed. There is also the Warsong Gulch Honored Rings which is Protector's Band for the Alliance and Legionnaire's Band for the Horde. Now these are better than Demon Band but they're worse than those best rings. I wouldn't go out of your way for these. To get you started there are also a few quest reward rings. For the Alliance, you can get Iron Forge Memorial Ring from a King's Tribute, the quest chain that begins with that dead dwarf in the water between Hillsgrad and Arathi. Even easier, you can also grab the Ring of Iron Will from the Yowler quest in Redridge Mountains. For Horde, you've got three options from quests. Uh, this is going to be an order of goodness. First up, there's the Inventor's League Ring from the quest Hypercapacitor Gizmo in Thousand Needles. It requires killing a level 30 elite though, so you might need help with this one. Next up, the Horn Ring comes from Vorshar the Lasher, which is a short quest in Ashenvale, and the Bounty Hunter's Ring comes from the Hezreal Bloodmark quest in the Barrens. Now we come to the final slot that we can fill. Uh, by the way, there are no idols that you can wear at level 25, so don't even worry about that slot. The absolute best in slot is Arena Grandmaster. For this you need 12 Arena Master Trinkets and you get those from doing the Arena event in Stranglethorn Vale. Good luck. It's also, it's actually not unique, so theoretically you could get two of these, uh, but practically I wouldn't really bother. Our other two options are Rune of Perfection, which you get from getting to Friendly Rep, not on it this time, only Friendly, with the Warsun Gulch faction. Uh, and the other one is Avenger's Void Pearl, which drops from the new BFD raid. 